Morning. Good morning. I was getting, I was waiting to hear. I mean, like on daylight savings time, is there one less time or one more? Well, thank you everybody for being creative, coming out here now earlier than normal, and uh, braving the weather. Uh, I we can't do much about the roads to get here, but I saw they were a little bit icy this morning. So, thank you for being creative, and that's what our theme is today: about what does it mean to be vulnerable, and what does it mean to be creators. And uh, so God is always calling us and uh, calling us closer to be with God. So let us begin. Please rise as you are able. As we sing together, draw me close.
declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Roll up your sleeves. Let down your guard. Make yourself at home. Love to the table. Release the tension in your jaw. Take a deep breath. Return to God with all your heart. May it be so. As we go into our gathering today, we speak about the God of Abraham and praise. You'll find it in your hymn on summer 831. And while we're singing this, Nikki Young will bring up our children, and we'll have our children's message right after the song. Let us join together the God of Abraham praise, number 831. <laughs> Did you ever see a baby chick hatch? At first they're like really wet when they come out of the egg. 
things, right? And they have to, you gotta put, if you hatch them yourself, you put like the heat lamps on them to dry them out so they get cute and fluffy, right? So during that time, she teaches them how to scratch for their food and teaches them other things they have to learn. And she protects them from animals like coyotes and raccoons that might wanna harm them. She gives them a lot of care and will, um, and we will call this sacrifice. She really sacrifices for her chicks. So do you think, can you picture in your mind how like cozy and warm that might be to be under your mama's wing and safe, right? So Jesus uses this picture of a mother hen to teach us about his love. Some people came to him and warned him that King Herod planned to harm him and that he should go and go to another place. And he was healing people, and he wanted to continue his work, so he didn't leave. And he had such love for people that he said, How often I wanted to gather your children together like a hen gathers her own brood under her wings. So just think again about that comforting picture. That Jesus cares for you, and he offers you the warmth of his love. As you stay close to Jesus and his teaching, you also receive protection that comes from making good choices. Jesus gave his life and he sacrificed to care for us, his children. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us all the time. Thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe. Thank you for loving us all and send us out to show your love to all our family, friends, and even those we don't know. Hold us in your loving arms. Amen. Amen. Good job. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Over the year, I found out that hearing aids, a microphone, and a mask don't work well together. So take the hearing aids out, and you know, then I don't have to hear whether it's a good job or I don't know what the heck he's saying. <laughs> okay, I don't have to hear any of that. <laughs> Our first reading is a poem that comes from. The pastors who collaborated and artists who collaborated on the series that we're doing on Full to the Brim. It's come rain or shine. Please follow along. I will keep on. That's what I heard him say. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people, speaking the truth and loving endlessly, searching for the lost sheep and crying for the brokenhearted, feeding the hungry, and welcoming the outcast. I will keep on. That's what he said. Right after he said my name, right after he called me beloved, right after he welcomed me home and saved me a seat. And I knew there was no stopping him. I was under his wing. Come rain or come shine. Today, and tomorrow, this love keeps on. Here ends the reading. Please let us enjoy as we prepare for our gospel lesson. An anthem by our chancel choir, His Will Was Done.
we're able, the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen, gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Strange symbols here, right? Strange symbols Jesus is using to talk again to his friends, the Pharisees that pop in and out of our story on Jesus' travel to Jerusalem. The three-year travel. And we have here in Luke where Jesus goes and constantly being told what not to do on this three-year journey, and he just plods along, healing and taking care of people along the way. And I think it's a story of two kinds of courage, you see, um, in this story. Right? There's that instantaneous courage that we see, right? When somebody runs into a burning building and brings out the children. You see that on the news a lot lately where people are, you know, running and they see that there's a fire there and no one's going in the building and, and, uh, and then somebody just passerby jumps in and climbs into a window and brings the child out. Or this past week where we had people who were dropping children out of the second story window and other people were catching them. That's instantaneous courage. Then there's the other kind, right? The first one was like the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees just went and they heard about Herod killing Jesus. So they run up really quick and said, you got to leave. you got to get out of here. He's got to kill you. You know? But all the while, see, their instantaneous courage, they're not doing that on a consistent basis, are they? Are they preaching every day on the Sabbath about Rome and about how Rome is oppressing them or about the church that's overtaxing them in Jerusalem? Are they talking about the fact that both Herod and the Sadducees in the temple of Jerusalem and also Rome is attacking the people and they are in hunger and they are starving in Jerusalem at this time? Then there's the second kind of courage. And it's the kind of courage where you just plod along doing what God calls you to do on an everyday basis. You just keep doing, you just keep on going and doing it. No matter what people around you may say, and that's where I believe we find Jesus today. Where Jesus is going about and healing people, and the Pharisees are like doing that instantaneous thing and saying, get, flee, run, you're going to die. And Jesus just keeps plodding along. And he said, I don't care. There's people that need healing. And I think, catch, you know, like the second part of courage is that when we are full to the brim and when it flows over and are serving other people, right? You know, people may ask you, you know, um, why do you still go to church? Or why do you go to that church and not the other church? Or why do you watch it on video? What, why are you spending your time doing that? And you feel this calling and you feel this need and you, and you, and you, and you feel called to do it. And so you keep on doing it. Or maybe it's, it's, it's like that what you serve. Like some people like their eyes are like, do you ever have anybody retire? You know, and, and uh, you know somebody, and, and the things that they do, and they say they never found, and they never uh, 
have any free time. Right? Anybody recently retired or witnessing that? <laughs> and you wonder, how did I do anything before I retired, you know? But you do it. It's the second part of courage, and, you, and you're like watching your grandchildren, and you're doing things out in the community, and you're feeding people, and you're taking care of people, and that kind of stuff. Because that's the kind of courage that fulfills us, and gives us purpose, and gives us joy, and a sense of belonging. And that's where I believe that we find Jesus in our story today. Jesus has that second kind of courage where Jesus is called, called to just keep going about of doing the business. He just says, there's there. You know, I'm casting out demons and I'm performing cures today and tomorrow. And he goes on and he says, you know, I, I desired, I tried to help you guys a long time ago. I tried to help Jerusalem. I tried to help all the Pharisees. I'm trying to help the establishment, the world, wake up to the calling of God. However, no one listens on that level. So I'm just doing the everyday thing and going through and plodding along. It's courageous, right? Because all the way that we know that Jesus came to save the world and came in the most vulnerable form. You know, Nikki was talking about um, the baby chicks and when they're born, they need their mother, they need their hen to stay underneath them for six more weeks to keep them from predators and that. And then yet God, you know, God has his plan. It, you know, like, let's go back to Christmas, right? Um, you know, we won't do any more carols, will we? No, no carols on the agenda, okay. But, but, you know, like we go back to Christmas and we think about this whole thing that we celebrate, you know? And when you really think about it, when we're talking about vulnerability here, right? Why would the Son of God, why would God, the Word made flesh, come onto this earth as a child? Seems like a really stupid plan, doesn't it? I mean, for God? Couldn't you come up with a least vulnerable situation, you know? Couldn't you make him a superhero? Couldn't you make Jesus fly through the air, you know, with armor or like, you know, Iron Man or whatever the other current superheroes are, Superman, whoever your superhero is. Couldn't God come on earth instead like that? No. God comes as a baby. The most vulnerable of all humans, of all flesh, needing constant care, constant attention, and yet that's how God chose to come to the world. That was God's plan. Courageous, vulnerable, to show the world that God is willing to do that and be in the most vulnerable state and courageous to go on. And then we have, we have the Pharisees here again. And Jesus must have thought, you know, going back to the beginning, when he was a child, Herod's father in this story is the son Herod. And Jesus must have thought, well, your dad tried to kill me when I was two. Remember the innocence? And that's the first Herod. And that's how Herod wanted to get rid of Jesus. Because he knew that, and then what Herod did is he went out through the kingdom. And he slaughtered all these children trying to get the son of God trying to get the king of kings. But Jesus is getting this threat once again. And just like Jesus' parents who just went along and did their normal thing, they fled and just went along their life. Jesus stays here though, however. And Jesus stays in the Jerusalem area on his way to Jerusalem, even though he knows what the end is near. Even though he knows that the cross awaits him. Courageous, right? Jesus could have fled. Jesus could have went anywhere else in the world away from Herod. But he knew that the world, no matter what, was still the world. It was still corrupt. Rome was still oppressing most of the world. And Jesus wasn't about power. 
or any of that. Jesus was about showing his love and God's love for us. And I think like Jesus, in looking at this passage, doing those things which are free to show how vulnerable we are too. And yet, how in our vulnerability we show our unconditional love for others. Because you see, being vulnerable, the Word made flesh, God coming to the earth as a child, being vulnerable where we express ourselves and expose ourselves, and when our neighbors and our friends and family tell us, like, why do you do those things that you do? They're not what everybody else is doing. But we're doing them out of unconditional love and to help others. Being vulnerable and serving others reveals how much we love and have a passion for others, right? And what do we get in return for this vulnerability? Well, you're not going to get praise. You're not going to get uplifted. Oh, they might give you citizen of the year or something like that every now and then. But I think this is more personal. I think that's the reason why we serve. Those who serve to be the citizen of the year, to, I mean, just for that, that purpose alone, or to be put up on accolades, that's not what it's about. This comes down to a very centered core of who we are and what we strive to be and what our purpose and soul is. This comes down to our soul. This everyday courage that we do by serving others is coming and creates inner joy. It's the creativity, it sparks creativity by being vulnerable. We have to figure out ways to be able to do the things that we do even though the world throws us hurdles, just like the Pharisees said that to Jesus, they were hoping to stop Jesus because Herod wanted to kill Jesus or threatened to keep Jesus. And the world throws barriers in our way as well. But it also gives us a sense of belonging and love that no other kind of courage can do. You see, Jesus in his everyday courage, his vulnerability, his unconditional love for all, found the cross in the end and kept on plotting towards it. Along the way, he did heal, casted out many a demon and made this world a better place. And in the end, among the naysayers, the astonished community, he walked with them to the cross. The thousands of people that left their homes and their nets by the shore and just walked with him and stood there at the cross. The shocked disciples and even his mother, as they couldn't believe what was happening. Why? Why? Why did you choose this? The pride of the nobility and those in power, but none of that matters. Jesus healed and traveled to Jerusalem on his time, on his terms, on his love on his courage, in his vulnerability. In a time when the world needed God to come and show up in person. And just like when the world mocked him and threatened him and begged him to stop loving and not be courageous. We too, we too will face that in our vulnerability as we serve and change this world. And like Jesus, joyfully, we can say at the end, it is finished. Amen. Please rise if you are able. And in there, the bulletin, we have provided two different, two different ways to sing these songs. We have today, Shout to the Lord. And if you like sheet music, we have sheet music in the back. And if you just want to keep to the bulletin and the lyrics to follow along, we have that too. So it's whatever your choice. But unto the Lord, as the Pharisees yelled out, let us also shout to the Lord for our salvation.
faith, let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together allow us to pray for creation, the world, and our whole community. Almighty and gracious God, you came on earth, word made flesh, prince of peace, and yet this world seemingly cannot grasp this notion of peace, of sharing and love. We ask you, Almighty God, to be with our brothers and sisters and all in Ukraine, Sudan, Afghanistan, and all areas in this world where there is war and conflict and strife, Almighty God. Be with us, Almighty God, and help those in need. We pray, Almighty God, to provide a courage, the courage to act instantaneously to help those immediately in need, and also courage to sustain, to keep our faith in you, to keep our faith in God, even when it seems like there's no God on this earth, while wars rage, why things get more expensive and our resources become more minimal. Allow us, dear Lord, to focus on those in need and have the courage and vulnerability to say that it is right that everybody should be equal and have equal ability to eat, to have health, and to live in peace and freedom. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for those that need healing. We pray for those that are caregivers. We pray for their spiritual wisdom and discernment so that they could diagnose, treat, and then persistently to bring therapy and healing. We pray for those family members and loved ones now, dear Lord, allow our silently heart that need your healing. Nancy, Sue, Marsha, Mackenzie, Almighty and gracious God, provide them all healing, for we know you are the great healer of all. Heal our hearts also, O Lord, not to be hard, not to be hard and distant, to those that seemingly don't understand, but allow us to embrace them instead with love and your unconditional love. Let us be the vulnerable ones, dear Lord. Let us be the first ones to say, come, come, let me tell me you a story about my God. Come, come to our dinners and have fellowship. Come, come and help us with prayer and feeding others, dear Lord. Let us be vulnerable. Give us that courage. Almighty and gracious God, we pray also for those that are grieving, dear Lord. Grieving the things that we have lost over these last several years with this pandemic. There are many things that we have lost along the way, dear Lord, and we grieve them. However, you call us anew, as you did so long ago, to keep plodding along and to sharing the good news loving our neighbors. And we pray for those that are grieving, dear Lord, the loss of a loved one. We especially pray for the friends in this community in the loss of Catherine Underwood. We pray all these things, dear Lord, 
and everything else that you know that goes unspoken, for you know our prayers before we even ask them. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And there is great vulnerability and great courage. There's a lot going on, and especially these next couple of weeks, phenomenal amount going on. Uh, today, I want to remind that catechism is not from 11 to 12 today or from 10 to 12. Today, we have our large catechism group, and we'll be meeting this afternoon from 1 to 3 o'clock in room uh, 33 initially. And we'll be discussing if anybody wants to uh, come and join us. Did God create the devil? God created everything. Why didn't did God create the devil too? So, anyway, a lot of fun. <laughs> Come join us. Also, save the date uh, coming up for senior ministry. It's for everybody. Please invite on Thursday, March 24th from noon to 2 p.m. Um, How the Pretzel Survived Prohibition and Other Twisted Tales. And it tells the story about how during Prohibition, uh, the saloons and beer halls uh, were the main business trust that saw pretzels and pretzels. And so when they had to be shut down, uh, the pretzel industry had to find different ways to survive, and it did. So to celebrate that, I think our senior ministry is having beer and pretzels. Is that right? <laughs> Carol? All right, well, you'll have to ask her, but it does sound exciting, doesn't it? So anyway, sign up for it. The sign-up sheets are over on our left, so um, uh, please let them know so they know how much to uh, buy. Um, also, Sally, I, could you come forward? I think there's something that you're, you're doing. Not, I'm shy. <laughs> Please come forward. Show your vulnerability and courage. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So first of all, of course, we're in Lent, and on Wednesday nights we have a Lenten meal. If you don't want to cook, you come home from work, you come home from school, come on over. We serve um, a simple Lenten meal, soup, bread, salad. Um, four more Wednesdays, um, so come on out. The meal starts at 6 o'clock, and if you want to help me wash dishes afterward, come on over at 7 o'clock. There were great helpers who helped clean up the tables, but those of you who were there and having your nice worship service heard me clonking around in the kitchen, so I'll appreciate any help with dishes. So that's my first one. Second one is two Saturdays from yesterday, so March 26th, we have our annual spaghetti dinner. All you can eat, Chef Chris makes homemade tomato sauce, homemade meatballs, homemade bread, as much of that as you want to eat. Um, Nancy Gross has a friend who's making homemade pizzas for us this year, and of course, along with her ice cream. Um, the prices and the times are in the bulletin, four to seven o'clock, and it is a BYOB if you'd like to do that. So we hope to see you. The spaghetti dinner um, supports the picnic row, and we in turn um, support our youth activities. So if you're a youth person who would like to serve or bus or help with drinks and things, please let me know. We'd love to help. All right, thank you so much. And I'm gonna jump in. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a handout in your bulletin about the Garden of Hope. Yes, there's snow out there, but spring is coming, and we have to get this thing started. So we're not just going to be planting vegetables, though. This is a community-building thing also. So uh, this week, Tuesday, we have a meeting here at church, a uh, kickoff-type meeting. So all are welcome. Even if you're not sure that you want to work in the garden, you're welcome to come and join us. And then there's these two little QR codes that you can scan with your phone to watch a quick video. I think it's about two minutes um, uh, that Trellis put out to invite you to our meeting on Tuesday. And there's a survey. It's not just for those working in the garden. It's an interest survey for everyone in the congregation to fill out. And there's an option if you can actually check off a box that you do not want to work in the garden. 
So, but we'd like to get the interest of our congregation, get that information together. And then, of course, all these dates for your calendar. So, hope you can join us. Thank you, that was excellent, that saved me. I, I saw you look down and you saw I had the sheet for next, so that's great uh, time. Also, that immediately following, um, we'll have the, the youth group out there teaching people with their phones how to scan. <laughs> Very important, so how to use your smartphone. Um, but all, uh, the, the uh, thing for that, you can go on our website, I mean, uh, on our Facebook page, there's, there's different links to there, or look at here and type them in, uh, the survey. It helps us know, we talked about courage and vulnerability. For two years, people ask me, how long do you think this thing is gonna go? Our Loaves and Fishes food ministry, and they're asking. Um, and uh, there is a great need for it. We're, we're changing and revamping uh, of who is receiving our meals and the most vulnerable, we are, are moving out. On Tuesday night, um, we are working with Chosen 300 the second Tuesday of every month. That's the homeless in Pottstown. Uh, where we have a small worship service and then feed them. And then also we are starting on Saturdays for the homeless veterans uh, on, in Pottstown area and other places uh, to help them supply meals. And so we are branching out and doing different things and other organizations are helping us in return. But we need to know, we need to know what courageous, what things do we want to undertake? What things do we want to do um, and continue with this food ministry? It seems to be what we have the greatest assets for and are doing in this world, plodding along on our way to our Jerusalem. But uh, it's, it's, we need to know. We need to know how much courage. Like Donna said, this is a, this is a community-wide thing. We have the, the garden out there. We have 3,000 square feet. Everybody thought it was so wonderful. Last year, um, we had a lot of people said they were courageous, and then we, we didn't see so many people. So this year, we're talking, they wanted to expand it 100%, and we're like, no, no. So this is one of the ways to participate. So Tuesday night, we have a uh, meeting, a Zoom meeting, right? And, uh, and then basically, you can go on there and, and see what it's about. But we got to feel out how courageous are. Is this something that was just for a year? Is it something for two years with the garden? Is it something forever? Um, so we need to know. And uh, how courageous can we be in moving forward and supporting and doing God's mission and will? Um, so very important stuff. Spaghetti dinner, you heard about Easter egg hunt, April 9th at 10.30. This is open, right? Yes. And then also, it is also an open house. Um, so come on out, and the Garden of Hope is having an open house that day. In your green bulletin, what Donna said, there are many events coming up in the next three weeks because it is time for planning. So please come out, please join us, and uh, be creative. Anything else for the good of this community? Okay. Please rise if you are able, and let us sing together. Savior again to your dear name. You'll find it in your hymnals, number 534. <laughs> 